When you talk about the Titanic, everyone talks about the shoes, the pairs of shoes that are left behind. There's all kinds of evidence of the passengers. What evidence did you guys find or notice that you can share about the passengers and crew? Well, I want to say, and this question comes up all the time, I have never seen human remains at a wreck site to this day. I know, I know that human remains have been found in some shallow water wrecks, but in these deep ocean wrecks, I haven't seen any human remains. In Titanic, you mentioned the shoes. I actually argue against a lot of it. Most of the examples of shoes I see are not actually in a natural position. The sinking of the Titanic was a tragedy which took about 1,500 human lives and continues to capture the fascination of generations to follow. Case in point. On a recent episode of the video podcast Museum Ship Mafia, we had two guests on, Victor Vescovo and Park Stevenson, both deep ocean explorers. In 2021, they led the expedition that discovered the hull of the iconic World War II destroyer USS Johnston. That shipwreck lies at almost twice the depth of Titanic. As leading deep sea exploration specialists, they had both been to the wreck site of the Titanic multiple times. So it shouldn't have been a surprise when the conversation turned to this world famous shipwreck. Along with Park Stevenson, Victor escorted Parks down to the Titanic. Our team uh, dove Titanic five times. I dove it uh, three times and Parks was with me on one of the dives. And Victor was the only one to do it solo. And that was probably the most dangerous dive I ever did. Some of the most compelling and disturbing images are the photographs and footage that reveal shoes. In many cases, pairs of shoes. Initial reactions to those images made us realize that this is not just a pair of shoes, but shoes that belonged to a person. Dr. Robert Ballard, world-renowned oceanographer that discovered the shipwreck of the Titanic in 1985, offered this explanation during a National Geographic lecture series in 2012. You know, when you're down there and you're photographing the bow and you're photographing the stern and you're photographing the boilers and everything's gigantic, gigantic, gigantic. But then when you go across the debris field, you come across these pairs of shoes. People forget that after the Titanic crashed to the bottom, about a half an hour later, all the people that were in the, in the water who were freezing to death, it took about 30 minutes to die in that cold water. And those that didn't have life jackets then came raining down. Hundreds and hundreds of bodies came like rain and landed all across the debris field of the Titanic. The animals quickly found them, removed their flesh, and the deep sea is undersaturated in calcium carbonate, so it literally dissolved all the bones. It takes about five years, but the entire skeleton of a human at those depths will vanish. And what's left behind are their pairs of shoes, exactly as they were attached to the body. That explanation of bodies of passengers sinking to the sea floor, their bones dissolving over time in the salt water with nothing but their shoes left to mark the resting place seem to make sense. But is there a much simpler explanation? One that many present day travelers can relate to? Park Stevenson is considered to be one of the most sought after experts on the wreck of Stevenson. the Titanic. He has been studying the Titanic for 20 years uh, so good to see you, Park. So you've called this. He's been interviewed hundreds of times on news platforms like CNN and, and the BBC. Well, ooh, thank you for having me on, Frederico. Well, I want to say, and this question comes up all the time. I have never seen human remains at a wreck site to this day. I know, I know that human remains have been found in some shallow water wrecks, like the Hunley, the U-166, and some others. But in these deep ocean wrecks, I haven't seen any human remains. In Titanic, you mentioned the shoes. I actually argue against a lot of it. Most of the examples of shoes I see are not actually in a natural position. And you got to realize Titanic was a passenger liner who had a lot of luggage. That stuff all spilled out in her fall to the ocean floor. Titanic fell two miles, two and a half miles as a ship that is fully flooded, fully equalized. As she's going down, 
you've got a lot of water flowing across and through that wreck. Anything lightweight is usually washed out on the fall down to the bottom and deposited on the ocean floor. This image from the Titanic shipwreck, appearing in Dr. Robert Ballard's lecture for National Geographic. If these shoes were truly on a body that disintegrated, wouldn't they fasten the same way? The left shoe fastens on the outer side of the shoe. The right shoe does not. Not a typical way of fastening shoes in the early 1900s. There are four shoes in this photograph from Titanic's wreck. The two shoes in the foreground, at first glance, appear as a pair of shoes from a disintegrated body. However, the left shoe has a heel height that is different from the right. Further, the two shoes appear to be considerably different sizes. This photograph is of a pair of shoes with what is most probably a coat. James Delgado, once the Director of Maritime Heritage at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, also known as NOAA, was quoted as saying, these are not shoes that fell out neatly from someone's bag right next to each other. The way they are laid out makes a very compelling case that it is where someone has come to rest. If what James Delgado is saying is true, the left boot, the one at the bottom, would have an ankle at a 90 degree angle to the right boot. With effort, most of us could probably draw our feet into a very similar position and hold it. But can it be considered a normal way for the feet of a dead body to fall through more than 12,000 feet of water? We all pack shoes in our luggage. Pairs of shoes in our luggage. Over 100 years ago, most luggage was made of heavy canvas. The few leather suitcases that remain today on Titanic were apparently made from tanned leather. However, not everyone on Titanic could afford leather suitcases. Titanic's crew would have used ditty bags made from cotton or canvas, and many third-class passengers would have as well. Any luggage made from cloth would have vanished in the first 20 years after the sinking. Shoes packed together in that luggage would then be left on the ocean floor beside the clothing they were packed with without any signs of the luggage they were in. This photograph appears to be an example of exactly that. I've only seen one instance at Titanic where it probably does indicate that a body landed there. And when I say landed there, I mean the person didn't die on that spot on the ship. These shoes were found on the ship, but in a place where a person wouldn't have been, a body had to have settled on that spot on the ship and then wasted away. So what do you think? Do you agree with Dr. Robert Ballard's explanation of dissolving bones? We've seen Titanic for a century now. Or do you agree with Park Stevenson and his reasoning behind dissolving luggage? number of people throughout the past century. Leave the word bones in the comments section below if you think the pairs of shoes are due to dissolving bones. Or type the word luggage if your vote is for dissolving luggage.